Okay, so this is just gonna be a semi quick shit opinion with me. Alright, um, I've been playing some Siege. I shouldn't say I've been playing because I haven't really played anything in like a month. And Tarkov's just completely fucking terrible, right? Not completely terrible, but it's, it's, it's getting terrible. So I'll be sure to make a video on that sometime within the next month. Uh, probably next wipe, honestly. Um, you know, manage expectations, right? L realistic goals. But anyway, uh, I was playing a bit of Siege. Uh, I don't even know, like two weeks ago or something. Um, because I've been stupid fucking busy the last two weeks. I'm going to be stupid busy next month. I'll probably, honestly, pl like stream Siege sometime next week. At least two days next week, I'm calling it. Two days next week. May not be long streams, only an hour or two, maybe three or four. But, you know, that's my goal. But anyway, so shit opinions, right? Uh, Siege isn't isn't in a terrible spot. Um, I made a video a while ago, which, you know, I'll uh, put in the card, whatever. However that works. Around here somewhere. Uh, about my other shit opinion about Siege dying. I don't feel like it's on the same death spiral as it was two months ago, three months ago when I made that video. Although I will say it's still probably pretty close, unfortunately. Um, and I don't mean like, you know, Siege is still circling the drain. What I mean to say is that there can still be some considerable improvements Siege can make balancing wise, gameplay wise, even taking a step back from releasing all these operators and this and this and this and this and this and this and like holy shit is it a lot. Um, there's still some considerable changes that could and should be made, but playing it recently and watching SI 2021, like something about that, I don't know, like, like yeah, the community's, not all, not everybody in the community, but holy shit like holy christ there are so many toxic people in the community just playing ranked and trying to find a group and like trying to actually enjoy the game requires so much extra that it just it, it's 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 not worth it to a degree although it kind of is i'll admit i feel like siege is heading in the right direction and i definitely 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 want to see it like like get some life back to it you know, if you ask me, so far the prime of Siege was 2017. Yeah, right around there. 2016, probably. I'm trying to think. You know, I picked up the game in Velvet Shell. So I guess, what, 2016 just about. Um, hold on. So, um, that early, that early 2017, not 2016. Uh, but that early 2017 was like, like, like. My Astro was shitty when he first came out, don't get me wrong, in terms of, like, he'd shit all over you with that ACOG. And even for a while, but still. Like, from mid-2017, like, when, when, like, Ubisoft was really like, oh, God, op health was terrible. Okay, but, um, when, you know, that post, um, that post Operation Health, I don't know what else called it op doc or doc op whatever but anyway that post operation health was like such a critical time for siege because i like i said i remember picking it up Velo shell and it just it wasn't gonna be sold anymore you wouldn't have been able to find uh a copy of siege in stores you know fucking uh best buy said 20 dollars, 15 bucks and we'll give you siege now it's a full price game Games don't really hold their value like that, you know what I mean? Like, a good, solid, you know, five-year-old game now doesn't really hold its value like that. Um, so, from mid to late 2017, up until, I want to say, like, probably late 2019, even SI 2020, like, Siege really had that little something. Siege, Siege really had that little something where, like, when I meet people playing Tarkov, they're like, oh yeah, dude, I used to fucking love Siege. I used to always play Siege. And even, you know, there's something about Tarkov that Siege doesn't have. And I guess, yeah, it's realism. Even though that realism's fucking shit sometimes, you know. You, you could dump, like, a 30-round mag into a guy. And because they're using fucking M8060A1A2 and uh, M62A1A3 and he's wearing fucking this armor instead of this armor, he doesn't die. You know, and because I'm wearing this armor instead of this armor, I'm I'm just I'm gonna die. 
and you know, like I said, different video because like, holy shit, like that's one of the most infuriating things in the game to me. So yeah, Siege does lack that like super hyper realism, you know what I mean, that uh, Tarkov does, but it's miles in terms of, I'll say gameplay, gameplay and aesthetic and you know, just kind of that realism overall. You know, you actually have to strategize things no matter what my teammates will do. No matter how bad they're trying to fuck up. Um, it's miles ahead of COD. So I'd say it's closer to Tarkov than COD than it is to COD. But it's still really good. It's still, like... See, I said, like, I said what I was thinking. Like, yeah, Siege is still a good game for the most part. It's got redeeming qualities. It's just that they're starting to become few and far between. Just like Tarkov. You know, Tarkov in the last year or so has really exploded. And I say it's even going to continue to explode a bit. But there's people like me who are more than enthusiastic. Like, I don't want to say more than willing. Who actually like the game and enjoy the game. But only to a certain degree. You know, like, only... Only, like... In economics, it's called, like, utils. You know what I mean? Like, diminishing returns, that sort of thing. Like, you know, the fucking utils for Tarkov are, are diminishing real quick. Just because I don't have a fucking Bitcoin station level 60. And I'm sorry if this is a little bit of a Tarka ranch. A uh, ranch rant. But, it, it, like, it's got so many fucking issues. And I feel like Siege is unfortunately starting to go that way, you know. The way of a dying game. So, and, and I hate that. You know, I think I said it last year. Like, I really hate that Siege is really, really starting to just become this, like, new, You know, like... It's not as enjoyable as it used to be. Um, watching SI was pretty fun. I liked it. So I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but I, I hope like everybody can understand. Like Siege is just kind of iffy. Quick note. This is Pancake, my kitty. She's the bestest baby. You're the bestest baby. Say hello. Go hello. Um, it's her birthday. May 12th is her birthday. She's... A good little baby. She's so big. She's so big. She's so old. She's so old, baby. So, I got her little toys and went to the park. But, she just wants to be the center of attention only. Yes, yeah, she does. You want daddy's playing games. He, okay, bye. Thank you for knocking. Thank you for knocking my coffee down. Appreciate that. Thanks for knocking in my change jar. You're the best. But, uh... So, Siege, unfortunately, does have... A, it's getting to a state of diminishing returns. You know, my time as someone who's enthusiastic... You know, I'm not a professional gamer. I guess an amateur gamer. Or someone who who really is enthused with your everyday... Sh not your everyday shooter. I shouldn't even say that. Because it was your everyday shooter. It'd absolutely be caught. I'd be playing all the time. But, so, like, you know, someone who's um, enjoys a quality shooter... Yeah, quality games, but quality shooter especially, Siege is just hard. It's hard to love on. Okay, so moving on to that. Um, I guess this video isn't that short, but moving on to that, from that, uh, SI. SI has been surprised. 2021 has been surprising. You know, I'm really happy, personally, I gotta, I gotta say, I'm really happy to give Canadian, to give Canadian a shout out. Yeah, I know, all one person who sees this is gonna love it. Um, I'm really happy to see Canadian back. I'm a huge SSG fan, you know, back not that long ago, when, you know, two years ago or so, and they were just kind of, I don't know, they were, they were huge underdogs. Um, not as bad as, like, Tempo or, um, Tempo or E United, but, like, whew, you know, like, SSG were not expected to be the top players in NA. And it, it see, like, right here, 1-1, one, one, that's not bad. I mean, yeah, I think they beat Giants. So let's see. Da, da, da. Yeah, they beat Giants, and they lost to TSM, if I'm not mistaken. Makers, Makers. Oh, you guys can. Damn, you guys can't see it. Uh, hold on. Uh, damn. Okay. Freaking cursor is not getting captured, but whatever. Um, there we go. Makers, Makers rolling TSM. I shouldn't say rolling, but Maker's winning against CSM? Holy shit. You know what I mean? You know, color me surprised. Assuming that's not a racist term. Um, Mibber, OXG, MIBR, OXG. 
I don't want to say I'm surprised. Um, OXG talks a lot of shit. And Ladam fucking... I, I don't know what it is specifically about last year. I mean, Nip second place last year. Beating out fucking G2. Um, Ladam in general. At, at invitations. They come to fucking play. I don't know... Like, I don't know what it is about... Because, I mean, obviously, EU, APAC, LATAM, and NA have significantly different play styles. Um, I remember Empire against NIP, I think it was. Fnatic last year. Yeah, I think Empire Fnatic. Just the attacking defense style. Such a good fucking game. That, and, and, I mean, you don't expect it. So, uh, I just kind of want to go over it. Empire 3-0... Kind of surprised me, given how they've been this last year. Um, even last SI, they were, like, kind of... I don't want to say favored, but they were definitely supported. Uh, Liquid, not surprising. BDS, unsurprising. One, yeah, kind of surprising. Same with Furia and FaZe. Like, Ladam's really, really hitting it well. Uh, DZ, meh, Cloud9, eh. Excuse me, it's like... 1130, 1140. Um, G2. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, let's pull up the G2 roster in a minute. But I don't know what is going on with G2. Oh, no, it's capturing the cursor. But anyway, I don't know what's going on with G2. Cyclops, I mean, unsurprised. Uh, BDS versus G2. That's going to be a good game. DZ versus Empire. So, for, okay, for this one... This one, I mean, just based off 03 and kind of how they've been playing without Pangoon, Fabian. You know, they say there's no I in team, but those two, three people can make a big difference. No Pangoon, no Fabian. You know, switching out this, that, blah, blah, blah. Not doing well. Um, obviously, unfortunately. So, I'm going to give this one to BDS, unfortunately. Uh, DZ Empire, kind of the same thing, unfortunately. Uh, I don't, I, I want to keep saying unfortunately because I, I like, I want to see G2 make a slight comeback. I know the shit talkers and, you know, oh yeah, we're the best. But, I mean, fuck, letting Empire have it? Like, if Empire goes all the way, or, no offense to Nip, or Nip fans, but if Nip goes all the way, like, what the fuck, you know? How absolutely unexpected would that be and make SI 2022 that much better? So, um, I'm giving this one to Empire just because of how DZ is underperforming. Uh, G2 is winning. If, if CAG wins versus G2, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what to say. You know, I, I'm obviously smoking crack. Uh, I'm going to say Empire takes Cloud9 in this one. Although, like, I can see, I can see Cloud9 clutching. You know, I can, I can see what happens. Uh, my cat just keeps coming in and out. Pancake is just the most cutest, most unconsiderate baby in the world. Uh, so let's see. I, I'm uh, so move on to Group B. Nip phenomenal. Uh, a little surprising, given you know you got TSM, Oxygen, and NS, and SSG, but Nip being 2-0, uh, I think they can kind of keep the lead for a bit. Makers, that's really surprising to me. Um, especially, I mean, like I said, I don't want to call it against TSM sweep. It's kind of sweep though. Uh, TSM, I expect them to do better. So do I mean, you know, this is basically LATAM and NA. You know, where this is EU APAC. I kind of expect NA to be doing a little bit better against LATAM, considering. Like I don't like I want to say considering just how well, NA can do. You know, last year showed with SSG winning last year. It showed that. And he's a force to be reckoned with, and so is Ladam. And you would imagine the difference in playstyles wouldn't be as significant compared to Ladam and EU. So, I'd really like... Actually, they're an EU team. Hmm. Weird. Oh, that's, that's APAC. 